All right, in this video we're going to take a look at the head. Um, but before I get to the head, I'm going to point out one thing that I didn't notice when I keyed this out last time is, you see I only keyed the lean forward on a one frame. And the reason for that is I had forgotten that I keyed this uh, control across all these channels. I don't want this to animate it, I just want it to lean forward in this particular case. I might want to come back and add animation, but for right now I just really want it to hold that value right there. So you could just delete all the keys and add it back in, but a simple way to do it is just to select the channels you don't want anymore and break connections. And that just, the animation curves remain in Maya, but they're disconnected from this, so it'll just now hold that value uh, forever. And that's what I want um, out of the back here. So that, that was my mistake overlooking that last time. Uh, and so let's take a look at the head. Um, and the main thing that I want to point out here is just how much back and forth the head has here. It's just got much more sort of side to side bobble than it should. There should be some up and down in the head and we'll play around with that. But this side to side probably should be minimized a bit. And the reason it, it's here is just because we haven't counter rotated it. The head is doing what the shoulders tell the head to do. So you can see that those stay lockstep. It's much easier to see with wireframe unshaded. But you'll see that these two elements right here are staying exactly together. They're moving as a unit, right? We don't want that, right? We want to add more overlap and follow through into this. And really, we also just want straight up want to stabilize the head a bit because this is not the way humans have their heads when they move around. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take a look at this in rotate mode. And we'll see that here, that's straight on center. So this is flat and flat. Um, so if we wanted the head to not move at all, we could counter rotate this so this was ex exactly straight, This, both this axis and this axis. But I don't want that. I do want it to move a little bit. I just don't want it to move as much as it is right now. I don't want it to go fully static here. And so uh, what I'll do is I'm, I'm just, let me go ahead and rotate these things uh, kind of into position. So something like this and then something like this. Again, a little bit. You can see that that's not straight and this one is not quite straight either. It's, pr it's pretty close, but um, it's not quite straight. A little bit down, a little bit to the side, right? And I want these exact same values over here at 24, so I'll just middle click down here and then uh, press S. And then I'll go to frame 12. This time I'll actually just click it and I'll adjust these kind of the same way here. Right, so something like that. All right, it's not it's not exact, and you can see there's a, there's more variation from left to right. But let's just see how that how that works on the head. So I would say that that I probably pulled a little too much out. I'd like to have a little bit more motion in it than that, right? That's fairly static. So I think I just got a little too close to center with those. So I would do the same thing that I showed you uh, in the last one. We grab those rotations and just multiply them. I just want it to move a little less. So counter rotate a little bit less. So just uh, times equals 0.5, let's say. And let's just see if that's enough to get a little motion back in this thing. Right, so now it's got some motion. I would say, you know, it's, it's a little bit, I would say probably that's a little bit more motion than I wanted. So let me, I'm just back it up here and I'll do um, times equals 0.5. 7.5 or something like that because um, I think we were closer before. Okay, so now we have a little bit of motion in the head, but but not a lot. That's uh, that's a good starting place as far as that back and, back and forth shake. We just generally tend to uh, control our heads um, a little bit more than what, what you were seeing initially. A little back and forth is good, adds a little, little bit of uh, motion in there. Now the main thing I want to focus on with the head is getting a little bit of overlap and follow through because the up and down is the main motion of the head here. Right? We've got a good up and down motion on the head, but it's so static. Like the head just moves exactly with the body, right? So that is, has no overlap no follow through, it's just really static and boring and it's gonna feel very stiff. So what we wanna do is add a little bit of overlap into this so that the head, as the body's descending, the nose so sort of points up a little bit. And then as the body's going up, the nose points down a little bit and then catches up. So um, so the, the places that I'd wanna do that are the ups and the downs, um, So, but the contacts are my where I loop. So I'm going to do it at the contacts and then just past the downs. And that should give me a, a pretty decent result as well. So it's a, maybe a little harder to conceptualize, but hopefully just walking through the process, you'll, uh, you'll get the idea here. So I, again, this is the body is moving down. And if you don't remember, you can just grab the hips and take a look at what's going on on your translate, right? So that the body is the, the, the top is at eight and 20, and then it's descending until it gets to, to frame two and 14. Right, so I'm basically 
what I'm doing here is I'm going to keep this head pointed up just a little bit. Now all of this action is really happening here on the on the X. That's the only one I'm going to mess with for um, for getting this drag in here. And I want the same value at 12, but I only want a key X and then again at um, at 24. And and again, the important thing here is remember to middle click. Uh, that time I left clicked and it, it, it changed my value, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do that here. So again, now I have the head sort of dragging back and nothing's really happening. Here's the down. But I don't want to put the head into a down position at the down. I want the head to be in a down position a couple frames after the hips finish going down, the shoulders finish going down. So I'll go to four here and I'll just sort of counter rotate that down. Uh, maybe it's something like this. And then I'll just hold that same value over here at 16 because that's four frames after here. So zero to four, 12 to 16, same thing, this key there. So that should get me a little bit of drag and then a little bit of overlap. And probably that's too much. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, that's definitely too much. But you get the idea. Like there's, it's looser. Everybody, uh, hopefully everybody can see that 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 loosens this thing up uh, quite a lot from where it was. It's just overdone. That's all. So again, because it's overdone, I'll just go to rotate X, and I'll just change this uh, now. Just multiply this. So just uh, times equals 0.5. So I'll just reduce that range. You, again, you can see that number update here. And then we'll just take a look and see. Right, so that's pretty good. So now we got a little bit of a head bobble without um, drawing a ton of attention to it. And this could be smoothed out a bit, but that's a that's a good starting point uh, for adding a little bit of uh, drag, overlap, and follow through onto the head. Still having a little bit of back and forth motion, just a little bit of life uh, in the head, but not have it sort of bonking all over the place uh, because that's just not how humans work.